In this video we're going to cover how to do texturing on the character. Texturing is basically coloring the character, uh, except using um, not just colors, but uh, actual textures, which is images of um, like photorealistic images on our texture, or on our character. Uh, so here's the end result of what we're going to be aiming for. Uh, as you can see here, he has, um, let's say, a metal texture on the chest piece. Uh, the shirt has a nice fabric pattern on it. Um, and even the pants have um, a fabric pattern attached to them as well. Uh, you can see here on the bag, he has a nice leather pattern back there. Um, the gauntlets, the lacing, and the sword has a nice pattern to it. You see leather wrapping, wood grain there. I kind of used a, um, a nice gem. Um, I forget exactly what that's called. Uh, and we got the face up here, which um, if you zoom in super close, you can see there's actually a little bit of basic skin textures on them also. Uh, the hair has some uh, hair fibers coming down here. Um, and more or less, we're just going to cover how to put textures on a character. And the last, uh, uh, in order to do that, we have to have a UV map. And so the UV map has already been made and the textures are already dropped in here. So if I, I just click on one of these pieces, um, you can see that the textures are loaded in here and so it corresponds to all the pieces match up where they uh, were less left off at. Um, so we're going to cover how to export the UV map and color it in Photoshop to create the end result here. Alright, so what we have in the last time we worked with uh, Maya, we have our character in the checker pattern. So he's been unwrapped and we can tell that all the squares are evenly spaced. We know where to drop all the textures. They're all going to be pre-cut out for us now that we've already done that in the last lesson. Uh, so if I pull up the Hyper uh, Max the UV editor, I uh, select the guy. Uh, you can see that we have our UV layout already done. I'm going to turn off the background image by clicking the background image there. Turns that off. And the sword is a separate map, which is why it's overlapping. So I'm going to unclick that. All right. So we can see here we have our final UV layout of all the pieces of the character completely stretched out and evenly spaced on here. Um, what we want to do now is export this UV map into Photoshop so that we can paint our textures onto the character. So I'm going to go over to, on this window, UV editor is under window, uh, UV texture editor, and it pulls up this window. Uh, we're going to go, uh, once you select everything, if you're not selecting everything, it's not going to appear. So select everything in the scene that you want to export as a UV map that should have already been fit in this 0 to 1 upper square. Once you've consolidated that, the bottom uh, image or bottom option right here called UV Snapshot, you click on that and brings up an options box. Uh, it asks where do you want to save it at, so click Browse. I'm going to drop this one on the desktop and I'm going to call this, um, I'll call it Hero Demo Textures. Alright, save that. And here you can to, uh, pick the um, size of your texture map. Uh, typically games are going to run 1024, the newer games are 2048s, and then maybe the super really high-end games might be running 4096. Uh, all these are powers of 2, so back in the early days of Nintendo games it was 4 or 2s and 4s and 8s, and 8s become 16, 16s go to 32, and this may sound familiar with like uh, USB flash drives, you get 32 gig, 64 gig, um, or 256 meg graphics cards, or 512, these are all powers of 2. So 1024 comes after the 512, and that's kind of a standard texture resolution. Uh, older games, or even current games, they don't have a lot of texture resolution, maybe like pastel colors, maybe like Skyward Sword or something would have a lower texture resolution, uh, because they don't need to have that super detail. Uh, for photorealistic games like PS4 level and high-end PC specs, they might run 2048s or possibly 4096s. That's a pretty large map. Each texture map of the size is around 48 megabytes. Uh, so each character, if you have 100 characters, um, 48 megabytes, you're talking uh, 4.8 gigs in textures just for 100 different characters. So that's a really large map and it takes up a lot of file space. If I got my math right on that. Um, Sounds about right. I could be wrong in that. Uh, either way, it takes up a lot of space. Um, so, but if you do 4096, you can always downscale it. If you start at a lower map, you can't upscale it because you're going to pixelate it by doing this. So I'm going to start at a higher resolution with 4096 and I can scale it down. But 2048 is probably fine. Um, so anyway, with that, 
Uh, and then the rest of the options should be fine here. Uh, zero to one is referring to this upper quadrant right here and aspect ratio and keep it square. So, all right, so we press okay. And that should drop it on the desktop for us now. So we go to the desktop and here is our, let's double click on that and you can see it right here. It's a 48 meg file, rather large, but if you zoom in, you can see you get nice clear resolution at zooming in pretty far. The smaller the map you make, the more pixelation you're gonna get. So I can get a pretty decent size without pixelation here. But again, it takes memory of your game engine and that causes your games to lag if you have too large of a texture size, but you get better clarity. Um, so let's close that. So we're gonna take this now and we're going to paint this and bring it back on a character. So I'm gonna drag this file into Photoshop. Um, all right, and here you can see the one we're working with now and the original one right here, the finished one that's right here. So I've already gone through and colored all these things with different colors. I've used uh, fabric texture here. I've used um, leather texture here, some hair fibers there, some skin texture here, uh, metal texture up there, some more leather down there, and some linen pants texture there. Uh, so all these textures get applied to the character. So we're gonna create our own, or a new one of these texture maps. So over here, we start with the original. We've exported out of Maya now. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna flip these colors. You don't necessarily have to, but it makes it easier to see. So the shortcut is holding control and pressing I on the keyboard, and it'll flip it. Um, let's make this a little smaller. All right, so that fits the window a little better. Uh, so over here, image um, adjustments, inverse what we just did the control I, it's inverting the colors black and white. Um, also, in case your system opens up in tab mode, uh, basically it pops it up here. I usually don't like tab mode because it all lines them up in tabs. I'd rather have them pop out as separate windows and I can have lots of separate windows. Uh, that's a setting up here under preferences, edit preferences, uh, general, um, probably not general, probably interface. Uh, open documents as tabs. I've unchecked that. I don't want to use tabs, but in case you wonder why I can drop photos in here and they just um, pop in as their own individual windows rather than popping up in this uh, toolbar up here. Uh, that's what the tabs are doing. All right, so I have this image and if I were to go, um, let's just make a new layer and I'm going to take the brush uh, right here, brush tool, and I'm going to set the brush to, let's say, a nice uh, reddish color. And I can take, uh, let's say, I'll write my name right here. So I put my name on the guy. So this is on his chest piece. So if I were to go and press save as, uh, typically you'd want to save this as a Targa file, TGA, or bitmap. Uh, those are typically what game engines are going to read, Targas and bitmaps. You could try TIFFs also. Um, they don't typically read PSDs. But if you, keep, if you save this as a bitmap, let's say, so um, I'll put it as bitmap. That's not it. Uh, there it is, bitmap right there. So I save this as a bitmap hero demo textures dot bitmap. Uh, overwrite that one, I'll call this uh, textures two, sure. Actually, that should be called UVs. This should be called textures, oh well. Press save on that, press okay. So I have this done, but let's say I make a change now and I wanna press control S to save the shortcut. It's gonna pop this menu up every time. And the reason it's popping up every time is because you have multiple layers and multiple layers means you wanna save it as a PSD to keep those layers. Bitmaps are gonna compress it into one image and you lose your layers. So Photoshop by default wants to remind you that you need to save this as a PSD, don't save it as a bitmap. But since we don't put PSDs in the game, we want to use the bitmaps or the target files. Um, but I can shortcut this method and just leave it a PSD. So I'm going to do um, Hero Doma Textures as PSD. Save that. And so now if I make any changes, I can just press Control S on my keyboard and it doesn't pop off the menu anymore. So that shortcuts it a lot easier. It saves me a few seconds because we'll be flipping back and forth a lot. Uh, when you do finish up and go to the game for the final map, then you can save it as the bitmap or target or whatever. But for now, for testing purposes back and forth, I usually like to leave that as a PSD. So I'm gonna jump back over to here to Maya, uh, to this guy right here. And now that we've created the, the map for him, let's go assign the map to him. So we need the hypershade for that. I already have it opened right here, but if you were to go to Window, Rendering Editors, uh, Hypershade, 
uh, pulls up this window. I'm going to create a basic Lambert uh, for this guy. So I'm going to click the Lambert button and I'm going to double click on the Lambert right here with the left mouse. And it opens up the settings right here. And for color, I'm going to uh, set the color with using a file. So clicking the checker pattern will open up the uh, creating some more nodes. So I'm going to click on the file and then go to the folder right here. And then click on the one I just made, which is the PSD. So normally I would do a bitmap when I'm all done, but PSDs are faster to just keep control lessing and calling it done. So I press open and it adds it up here. Uh, so you can see it kind of jumbles all this stuff up. You can kind of move it out of the way to kind of organize it or press uh, this button up here, which should sort it back out. Um, or you have to click on the original one actually. So let's drag that back there expand that one out so you get all of them. So clicking on this one and pressing the expand button, uh, this one will kind of line them up. But you don't have to do that. All right, so if I right click, hold down and refresh, it should refresh the image back on there. Again, optional, it just helps you see what you're doing. And I can drag this, so middle mouse button to the last one on this line. So middle mouse and drag onto the character and boom, it applies the mesh or the UV texture or the final texture to them but I don't want to do that for every time so I'm going to select everything except for the sword which gets its own separate texture map so deselect that and then right click hold the right click and assign material to selection and that'll put it on everything so now when I look at a guy uh, let's close out that menu system and that one he has the name written right on the chest piece so if I uh, zoom in, you can see that it wrote his name right there, but only on the chest piece, not on anything else, because we've specifically denoted where that's going to occur at by pulling up the UVs. Um, and that should set up this, so we shouldn't need this anymore, so I'm going to slide it off, but we will need it to do updates. And I probably don't need the UV editor. So the next thing we want to do is get rid of all these lines. You probably don't want to see lines on the character the entire time. So let's um, switch back to Photoshop. I can click on here and pull up the, I guess this one. And if you turn off the lines down here, it kind of hides everything. So I wanna break this off separately. So if I double click this, uh, it'll get this locked. I can go and press new layer, okay. And by double clicking it, it frees it. So now I can drag it above and it hides my name now because it's the highest up layer. Uh, in order to see the stuff through it, I can go change, click on the layer that I want, which is the top one, the UV layer. I can rename these things by double clicking on the letters themselves. Don't cl click over here, you'll get different options like that. But clicking on the name, the letters, it brings up the option to rename things. I'll call these UVs so I can keep things organized. Uh, UVs, and if I change this normal option to multiply, so clicking on normal, go to multiply, it multiplies through everything. So I can see the textures underneath because it's a multiply mode. So this one stays on the top and multiplies down across all the textures. Uh, now if I, um, so now I can turn off the name and still see it underneath of this layer. I can turn off the UVs and still see the name also. And it has like a white background, which is fine enough. I'll just press Control S. Um, try that again, Control S switch over here and by default it doesn't update um, 3ds max would automatically update within a second of opening it but uh, for my you have to right click on the swash hold the right click and go to refresh swash and it'll refresh your image so it takes all the lines off there because we saved them without the lines uh, looks like I didn't assign some textures to that so I can grab this uh, right click assign material to selection and it fixes that all right, and his hair is still blocky, so I'll put three on that so it smooths it out. So three on the keyboard smooths things. Um, all right, so everything's uh, quite organized. Uh, we want to keep adding textures now, so I'm going to jump back to Photoshop. So Alt-Tab is a shortcut there. Uh, I don't need this um, or my name on here. So let me go grab some textures. Uh, I have, let's say, a, a bunch of textures I've already pulled up for when I finished the guy earlier. And you can see I have like um, blue leather, chrome, uh, cotton texture, fabric, some gems that go on stuff, gold, uh, metal, skin, fabrics. And you basically Google search this. So let's say I want a metal texture. I can go over here to, let's say, Chrome and type in, let's make it a little smaller. 
All right, so I want a metal texture. Boom, metal texture, go to images, and you have a whole lot of images to choose from. You can have like, let's say rusted metals, plates, brush, shiny, HD, seamless, and we'll cover seamless and what that does. Uh, but basically you grab a metal texture that you like. I've already grabbed one uh, from the folder over here. So I go to my textures folder and I have a couple of different metals that I picked from. Uh, this one um, seems to work. It's kind of a little black and white, I thought. So this one was a little more gray tone. This one kind of looked like concrete after I selected it, but it's called metal. So I ended up going with this one in the end. Uh, let's close out that. So what I can do now is take the metal texture that I want to use and uh, left mouse and drag it right into Photoshop and drop it in this empty gray area. And because they don't have tabs on, it'll just open as a whole separate window, which is really convenient. Now I can take this, um, go back to this one, turn this layer back on. So clicking this tab, clicking the eyeball, which will show your UVs. Now I can go back to here and then click on the move button, which is this one right here. Uh, v on the keyboard is the shortcut. So click and drag with your left mouse button into this one and it drops the metal texture into um, this window. So now I can drag, still using the move tool, and put it up here over top of the armor. So now I have the metal texture, which is sitting on top of the name. If I drag the name upwards, the name would sit on top. That's how your layers work, so let's drag that back down. Um, so I have the texture, the metal texture, and the uh, UVs. So now that I know that the metal texture is in the right place, I can tell that uh, it seems to fit pretty well. It's kind of got some overlap on other pieces, but good enough. I'm going to turn the UVs off so I don't see them on the export. Control S on the keyboard to save it. Uh, go to my over here. And again, it won't auto update. So right click and refresh swatch. And it should refresh with the metal texture on there. So if I zoom in, um, you can see that it works pretty well. Uh, in case it's blurry for you, I might just be going to the renderer option right here. Uh, default quality will tend to be a little blurry, um, but it looks pretty well so far. I uh, can go to high quality also, and the one I'm currently using is uh, viewport 2.0. Let's hope that didn't crash on me. All right, give that a couple seconds. Hopefully Maya will recover from that. Let's jump back to Photoshop. All right, so Photoshop over here, we can see that it dropped it in place. Um, it's still a little blurry here, so if I want to sharpen that up, I can go Filter and click on Sharpen. And that should sharpen up the image, except that I'd sharpened it on the wrong layer. That was the text layer. So let's try this again. Filter, and the last command I used was is up here now. So I'll click on sharpen and it sharpens our image. All right, so once that's sharpened, I'm gonna switch back over to Maya and then uh, let's get out of the high quality rendering, drop this in viewport 2.0. All right, so we have this here, uh, right click refresh and it should clear up this image a bit more because I just saved it with the uh, Photoshop being uh, sharpened on there. There we go, so it sharpened it a little bit. Um, and so that's how you basically apply textures. So we're gonna repeat the same pattern and keep applying textures. So I can close out, or zoom out of there. Um, oh, before I do that, um, also of note, on the back of him, he has a partially applied texture because it's overlapped right there. And we also have a partially applied texture right here because again, it overlapped on the UVs and other areas. So let's turn the UVs back on and we can take a look here. Uh, this is kind of, um, not long enough, so I can add this and drop this back in here again, or I can press Control T on the um, keyboard, and I can drag this a little bigger just to cover it. Normally, you don't want to expand things because you're going to pixelate things and it's going to make it blurry. You always want to shrink things. Uh, sometimes I make exceptions when it's just a tiny little bit. It's like, ah, it's just a tiny little bit. Um, so I can press Enter, and that confirms it. Uh, also, it's still overlapping right here. I probably don't want this overlapping there, and it's overlapping there. So a quick way to kind of, uh, I guess, select just that one area. I'm going to turn off the texture. And so let's go to the Magic Wand tool. And if I take the Magic Wand, and let's say I grab um, the pieces I want to keep, which is 
these, or not magic wand, the lasso tool. So I grab the lasso tool and lasso it, click on the UV layer, and then now I'll go to the magic wand tool, hold the alt key and click the empty area and it'll get rid of all the extra selection. So it refines it. And so that's because I'm using the UV layer while doing all that. Um, but I also don't want it to be super pixel to pixel all the way to the very edge because sometimes a one or two pixel overlap can cause a little white seam on the coloring. So I'm gonna go to select, modify, expand, and I'm going to expand the border by four. By doing so, it pushes out this border by four pixels, which is enough to compensate for any potential overlap. So now that I've selected out that area, and the pan button holding the space bar, you can pan around. Uh, so the space bar left mouse button. I'm gonna turn this layer back on, and it's going to select on this layer, basically. I'm gonna grab this one and press the mask button down here, and it masks off all the remaining outside area. So now if I turn the UVs off, I have just what I want right there. Control S to save, Alt Tab to jump to Maya, and then flip over here, you can see it didn't finish before last time, so right click refresh, and it should update. Yep, so now it fills the whole thing. And so we keep repeating this process. Let's jump back to Photoshop, turn this back on. And let's say we want to do the fabric now. So I close out the metal and we'll skip that for the rest of the metal. I will jump over to textures. And let's say I want to have a wool fabric pattern. Eventually I went using this one, but let me demo um, how this one works. So I drag this texture, which looks great. I drag it in Photoshop. And you can tell it's not actually even a texture, it's just a drawn image. So it's not a photographic resolution of fabric, it's just kind of drawn. Um, which is perfectly fine enough when you zoom out, it pretty much looks like fabric, so that's good enough for, for what I'm working with. Uh, so let's uh, take this and let's click the move button, V is the shortcut, drag this into our drawing, drop it on here, and okay. So let's say that's good enough, Control S, um, move over here, Turn off the UVs. Let's try Control S again with the UVs off. I'll tab over to Maya. That one. Um, and then refresh again. So what this will do is it'll drop this texture on here. And so now we have the fabric on them. Um, however, the texture resolution is super, super zoomed in. Uh, if you flip back to here, this is like a zoomed in one inch, one square inch of fabric. You're looking in that close at the weaving pattern. If I drop it completely on the character, even though it fits them, it's, it's zooming in an inch and spreading it across two or three feet of the surface area. And so it looks like it's a painted shirt, um, I don't know, some kind of Hawaiian shirt maybe. Um, and it looks great if that's what you're looking for as a textured pattern, but that's not the, you don't have um, knitting and yarn size of uh, your wrist going on weaving a shirt that's kind of large. So we need to change this resolution a lot smaller. And you can see it also overlapped onto the bag down there. So let's jump back to Photoshop and turn the UVs back on. What we want to do is make this a lot smaller. So Control T and then hold the shift on the corner and it'll scale it really small. Put that right in the middle, press enter, turn off the UVs, Control S, Alt Tab, right click refresh and boom he now has actual size yarn kind of woven uh, pattern so that looks about right now if i zoom in that looks perfectly fine uh, however it's it's missing a lot of the areas so whenever you have a texture that's nice but it's really really zoomed in you need to expand it and make it a lot bigger but you don't want to transform make it bigger so you want to make more copies so i can take this layer drag it on to the new option, the new layer down here, or the new, yeah, the new layer. It'll make a copy for us. I can go to the move tool and drag that copy to the side, and now I have two. And you can see, um, you can use the arrow keys to get that one pixel precision if you need it. They'll match together. And that expands the texture, makes it a little bigger. Um, also, this is what uh, the concept of seamless texture is. Uh, sometimes you take textures and you put them end to end and they don't match. And we'll cover that with a leather pattern. But this time, in this case, they do match edge to edge because if you Google search seamless texture, S-E-A-M, seamless, uh, you'll get that. So if I take this uh, and I can press right click and merge down and that'll merge the two layers together. So now when I move it, it's one piece, which works great. But sometimes it's um, 
another handy trick if you go to the marquee tool shortcut is M drag across it if I go to the a V tool which is move and then try and move it it'll um, still move it but I once it's selected it has that flashing border I can hold the uh, alt key and then move and what happens is it pulls off another copy and the copy it doesn't actually make a new layer it leaves it on the same layer so it's a handy little trick um, oops uh, handy little trick to kind of not keep making new layers so I can pan over here um, hold the alt key pull out a new one if I hold shift it kind of locks it to a straight across order and I can use the arrow keys to move it pixel for pixel precision uh, then I go grab the whole thing uh, V hold the alt key drag it up hold the shift key to lock it and pattern match it there repeat the same process drag it again and repeat it again and again and so very quickly I've um, repeated the pattern control D will deselect your area uh, I can um, actually let me go and just review this again so let's go lasso on how to mask out this area so lasso the parts you want to keep I usually keep more but I'm not going to bother for the demo so take that I'm going to go to the wand tool a shortcut is W hold the alt key click the empty area oops click it on the UV layer also won't work um, hold the alt key click it and it minimizes it right there we'll go select modify expand by four pixels to extra compensate and then click on the woven layer and click the mask button right there and it masks it out nice and clean turn off the UVs control s alt tab and right click and refresh so that should put the woven pe uh, texture all across the entire shirt now so if we rotate around you can see that it uh, covers just the shirt nothing else and it looks a little more realistic on the size of the woven pattern um, and so that's how that works I actually went with um, uh, this pattern on the uh, the scarf I guess behind them but you could uh, you could pick whatever you want the fabric is the one I actually use on the shirt. It's a lot more tight knit, but again, the same process of making it more refined by uh, squeezing it down and making it smaller. All right, so let's grab the leather texture right now. I have two different leather types. I tried this one, and I looked at that one in two different patterns. You can Google search and get lots of different types of leather. Let's take this leather. Uh, let's drag it into Photoshop. And it's a really large texture resolution, but it's also, again, zoomed in to about one or two inches. So you want to make sure you expand that. So I take this, I drag it into here, and boom, it's rather gigantic. Let's close out that. Um, I guess I probably could have left it open. Uh, take the UVs so I know what I'm aiming for. And let's say I want to put this on uh, the boots area down here, I guess. So I can control T, hold the shift, scale it down. Actually, let's do the bag. It's in the middle. All right, so I have this here, and I'm going to scale a little more so it gets really small and kind of looks like it should fit the bag area. Actually, not the bag would work just fine. I can leave the bag like this. Um, that's probably the back of the bag, actually. This is probably the front of the bag. Uh, so I'll leave that there. Uh, and then do one more. Um, drag this here and then move that up so I have the bag texture uh, and so that uh, should cover the bag pretty quickly uh, this is the inside of the bag I should probably not have those overlapping but again real quick I can lasso out what I want just this area go to the UV layer wand which is W alt click in the middle uh, select modify expand by four pixels click on this one merge it down and then uh, apply the mask so now I have just the bag with a nice leather pattern but as you saw it didn't quite match if I were to go back and grab that leather texture again drop it back in here and stick it down there oops drop it in here. That's how I put on the arm guard, so I'm going to scale this a lot smaller. And the arm guard is right here. So I scale this really, really small so it uh, has more of a 
leather pattern to it. But as you can see, as I've scaled it really small, it still doesn't fit the whole thing. So we go and try the same method again. I'll marquee around it, which is uh, M. I'll go to V for move, hold Alt and drag down. And these patterns don't match. They're not seamless. They don't have the same, um, they, they just, they're gonna have a, uh, a line between them. They don't, the colors don't match. So an another way of adjusting that, uh, let's undo that. I'm gonna make a duplicate, so drag this here. So I have two of these, so it's the same result, but it's two different layers now. And I can flip this. So if I go to edit, transform, flip vertical, I can flip the UV so now they match because it's a mirror edge on each side. Um, so I can do that. If I wanted to, I could flip it the other direction as well. So if I made another copy, I could go, uh, let's say, merge down, take this, make a new copy, and then edit, transform, flip, horizontal. And then move this one over here until that matches. So now I have uh, a reusable pattern that's a, a lot larger. So now if I turn this, um, let's merge that down, go to UV mode, you can see it completely fills up what I need now. And I can rearrange this pattern to wherever I want it to go. Let's say I go this direction, move it over here, and call that good for the arm guard. So he has more of a leather pattern. Uh, confirm that by pressing enter. And again, real quick, lasso up a section I want. Click on the UV layer, go to wand, hold the alt key, click the empty space. Uh, select, modify, expand by four, and click the leather layer and mask it, boom. Uh, turn off UVs, control S, alt tab over to Maya, right click, refresh, and boom, we now have the leather texture applied to the character, and looks, um, it could probably be sharpened up a little bit. The bag seems to be working pretty well as well. And sharpening, just uh, go back here. If you zoom in and let's say it's actual pixels about here, you could make it a little bit sharper. So uh, on the layer that we want to use, I can probably use two layers. Filter, nope, you have to do it one layer at a time. Click the one layer, filter, sharpen, and it should sharpen that up a bit more. We can do it here also, filter, sharpen, uh, control S, alt tab, right click, refresh. And it sharpens it up, so it's a uh, a little more clearer, I suppose, but it could be condensed a bit more to create more of the tighter leather fit. Anyway, so that covers the uh, leather and the uh, repeating patterns and seamless and all that. Um, I think that should pretty much cover the basics and you would pretty much just keep going through and just keep uh, applying colors and textures and everything that you would need. Uh, so let's jump back to the finished results. So after a lot of time and effort putting all these different textures in here, you can see I've applied the metal textures. I put the fabric texture on his shirt. Again, repeated the same pattern. Um, used a different color there. In order to get a different color, uh, let's say I take a brand new layer and say I wanted a square right there. Select it on this brand new layer just made and I can bucket fill. Let's say I have red right now. I bucket fill red. And again, click multiply, and then I'll multiply these colors together. So I'm going to get like a purplish color. So if I didn't bucket fill red, let's say I did a dark blue, I can put a dark blue there. Uh, and then drop the opacity down because it's kind of dark. I can get a darker shade. So control deselect. Uh, you can see I have that here. So what I did with the pants down here is that the original texture was a white texture. So I had a linen texture, but it was white. So I took that texture, dropped it in Photoshop. Um, actually, I could probably put it on the other one real quick. I'll drop it in here. Take this, drop it on here. And again, you'd want to go through and scale it a lot smaller, but for demo purposes now, I can make another layer. Let's say bucket fill, uh, which is this icon right here, bucket fill. Uh, this whole layer, and then go to multiply this layer, and then click on the marquee, select just this area, which is the square, and mask out the rest. Boom. So now I have a blue linen uh, 
pants color rather than the original uh, white color because I multiplied a color on top of the original texture. So you can change your colors if you want to do that. Let's jump back over to the finished one. And then for the gems and the gold, I went over and grabbed a couple different um, uh, different icons. The gem was actually a red color, so instead of putting the gem in place like I did there, you can actually go and uh, let's move some of this around. Move that there. If you go to image adjustments, hue and saturation, you can play with the hue. And even though it's a pink gem, as you slide this, you can get different colors because you're changing what color you're seeing. And if it's just one color, let's say red, uh, you can switch it to a bluish color simply by changing this. If you have lots of different colors, you're going to get very distorted effects. But you can easily slide your hue. If you, can, you wanted to go black and white or super colorful that way, uh, lightness or darkness, there's other settings, but the hue seems to work pretty well for changing your colors. Um, over here we have um, some gold patterns that I just grabbed off uh, some gold. This one looked really nice, but it didn't quite look as well when, you, when I brought it into Maya. This one seemed to work pretty well. This one worked pretty well. And then for the gems on the sword, I don't have the sword texture map here. I can grab that. Uh, Final maps, the sword diffuse map, drop that there. And here's the sword. So I grabbed a, a quite shiny sparkly gem um, and wood grain and the top of the sword. I used the metal for the blade and some gold for the handguard and a nice shiny gem and some leather for the, the wrappings. So the end result being the sword has uh, a decent texture look to it. Uh, so after um, a while you'll eventually get uh, a finished character like this and that should be pretty much all you need to do for texturing. Let's jump back to Photoshop and not that one, this one. And so here's what we're aiming for when you're all done just make sure you have the UV layer turned off. I also did one extra thing um, that you don't have to worry about. Uh, it's called ambient occlusion. What that does is it adds shadows onto your character. So you can see the wrinkles from the shadows and some wrinkles up here. If I turn off that layer, you get the original pattern texture, which is what you're getting from the UVs, but I added an extra one, which is called the shadow layer. Um, that would be uh, something you could render out. Um, here's the original ambient occlusion. It renders out a shadow pass and it adds shadows onto your objects. You can see it adds the wrinkle shadows and add some more shadows. It's a shadowing method to enhance your textures and you multiply that down top of your colors. I might do a tutorial on how to render out some ambient occlusion maps, a couple extra steps, but for the most part, as long as you have textures on there, that should be all you need. And that pretty much should cover uh, how to apply textures in this video. End off on the Maya scene. So here we have the finished result. And um, also, if you have, uh, sometimes as you do this, I guess I should point this out as well. Uh, let's jump over to uh, there. We go. Jump back to this one. Um, all right. So let's say I take this uh, texture I have right here. I'll take this one and I'll disable the layer mask. Take this, move it over here. So that it covers this, um, and I'll stretch it. You shouldn't really stretch it, but for the purpose of demo, uh, you can see what happens. Um, we'll turn off the UVs. I'll press Control S and jump back over to uh, Maya. Refresh Maya. And sometimes when you, as you're UVing, you notice that there's a bit of a texture streak right here. So the UVs, while I was doing the uh, texture pattern, the black and white checkers, I must have missed this. And so it's streaking my textures uh, right here. So sometimes when you encounter that, uh, you just want to go and adjust some more polygons. So I'll put this on level one instead of three, and you can see it looks perfectly fine, but on three, it seems to stretch it. So if I were to go and smooth it as well, you're still going to get the same results. So if I were to go to uh, mesh smooth, you still get the texture streaking. So in order to resolve that, I'm going to go back to the original one right here and go edit mesh, insert edge loop. And as I put an extra edge loop in here, let's put it back on three. You can see the result better. I'll drop an edge loop pretty close to the edge and it fixes it right there. 
Um, this one doesn't seem to have a problem there. This one has it, so I'll drop an edge loop at the edge and then go back to object mode. And you can see it pretty much resolved it. Uh, you can probably get a little bit closer to the edge and you might get a little more of a cleaner result. But sometimes as you go through and you UV these things, uh, you'll notice that you missed certain areas and some things are streaking a little bit, so you want to go through and um, readjust your UVs. And in case you need to readjust some things, you can go over here, uh, click on, let's say, this, and turn on your map that you're using, and you'll, you should see, let's make that even bigger, uh, you should see the texture placement. So if you ever needed to readjust something, let's say, uh, um, I guess this was out of place, Whatever you change here, if I right click go to UV mode, I can rearrange these things. If I move this further out, it looks like I did it on a spot that you don't really see. Uh, drag the sides here. So I bring this out and you can start to see that as I change the UVs, it's adjusting it here. So I could tweak the UVs just a little bit to kind of rearrange them. You do start to create texture stretching by doing this, but if it's only for a couple of little pixel areas you need to readjust something, you can modify the UVs. I just won't match your texture map anymore. Uh, so there's a couple tips on how to do all this stuff and hopefully that helps you guys with texturing. Um, and that should be it for all this.